Hello, welcome to another Yusako Bronze question. My name is Jimmy Ong. I am a course developer and instructor at Coding Minds Academy. Today we're taking a look at the 2019 January contest, question number one, Shell Game. Go ahead and pause the video and read through the question. There will also be a link in the description. All right, let's try to figure out what's important in this question. So first of all, they try and play the shell game where they kind of put a pebble and swap it all around. However, their shell game is slightly different from the one we're used to. So Elsie does not initially know the location of the pebble, and she can guess after every swap. All right, so that's very important there. So let's take a look at the sample input. On the first line, we'll have n, the number of swaps, and therefore the number of guesses. After that, we have an n amount of lines representing one swap and one guess from Elsie. So the first two numbers represents two shells that have been swapped. So in this case, the shells 1 and 2 have been swapped. And after the shells have been swapped, Elsie will guess. So the ordering there is very important. First, they do the swap, then Elsie guesses. So this little paragraph here shows us the breakdown of how they got the answer. So the answer to this sample input is going to be two points, at most two points. And the way you can figure this out is by breaking down the three possible outcomes, right? Since the pebble can only start in three possible places, under shell number one, shell number two, or shell number three, you can figure out what the maximum amount of points is. And the way you can do that is just by walking through each branch and finding the maximum of each branch. So for parallel universe number one, the pebble starts under shell number one. Right? Recall that each round has three numbers. The first two numbers represents two shells that have been swapped. So if the pebble starts under one before any rounds, during round one, you swap one and two. Now the pebble is underneath shell number two. Okay? So since the pebble initially started at number one, but in the first round, A and B were one and two, one and two switched, that means that the pebble is now under two. It has been swapped. So that's kind of the gotcha of this question. So after the first round, the pebble is under number two. Then Bessie guesses one, and she doesn't get any point of that, since the pebble is under two. The next round, they swap three and two. So the shell, the pebble was initially underneath two, and now it was swapped to three. After the swap happens, Elsie's gonna guess one again, and once again, we'll have no points. That round finishes, the third and final round happens, and the two shells that are swapped are one and three. So now the pebble is no, under, no longer under three, it's under one. And Bessie guesses one, so now she gets one point total. So this question here is a very nice introductory algorithm, like baby's first algorithm, right? So there's a series of steps that we need to kind of undergo to figure out what the right answer is. Hopefully you guys can follow along and figure out what those steps are before we get to the code. In parallel universe number two, the pebble starts under shell number two. So once again, because the pebble initially starts in shell number two, when round one starts, A and B are are swapped, so one and two are swapped. Now the pebble is underneath one. All right? So this time Elsie guesses correctly. She gets one point. Afterwards, the next round, the two shells that are swapped are three and two. So neither of them contain the pebble, so no real changes there. So actually the shell that contains the pebble is still gonna be number one. So Elsie actually gets a point for this. So just because A and B weren't swapped doesn't have any bearing on where the pebble is. So right now we kind of have like a pointer to where the location of the pebble is. And we're checking to see if Elsie guesses a number. Is that where the pebble is? So round two finishes, then round three starts. 
the shells one and three are swapped. So the pebble, which was under one, is now under three. And then Elsie guesses one more time one. And this time, the pebble is no longer under one. So she has a final score of two. In the last parallel universe, number three, the pebble starts under shell number three. Big surprise there. So the pebble initially starts on shell number three. And the first two shells are swapped in round one are one and two. So no changes to the pebble. Elsie guesses one, and there's no points. Next, the pebble is under shell number three. Then two and three are swapped. So now the pebble is underneath two. Once again, Elsie's guess, guess is wrong, gets no points. And same thing in the last round. So right now we kind of have like a pointer to where the location of the pebble is. And we're checking to see if Elsie guesses a number. Is that where the pebble is? So round two finishes, then round three starts. The shells one and three are swapped. So the pebble, which was under one, is now under three. And then Elsie guesses one more time one. And this time, the pebble is no longer under one. So she has a final score of two. In the last parallel universe, number three, the pebble starts under shell number three. Big surprise there. So the pebble initially starts on shell number three, and the first two shells are swapped in round one are one and two. So no changes to the pebble. Elsie guesses one, and there's no points. Next, the pebble is under shell number three, then two and three are swapped. So now the pebble is underneath two. Once again, Elsie's guess Guess is wrong, gets no points, and same thing with the last round. Alright, so our game plan for this solution goes like this. We're going to brute force it. Why? Because there's only three parallel universes that we need to be worried about. There's only three possible outcomes for three possible starting states. Either the pebble starts under one, under two, or under three. Each of those three starting states has a maximum or just has a score associated to it. After we find the score associated to all three, the last thing we need to do is just find the maximum. So our goal is to just simulate the game as best as we can and just remember what happens at every round. So let's take an overview of what our program is going to look like. So for all you stack problems, they always start and end the same. We're going to have input and output. So nothing special here. We've done this a million times. Let's focus on the middle part. First of all, this numCorrect function is going to take in a current location and shells, which is just going to be our input. So current location is going to be where the pebble initially starts, either one, two, or three, in this case. For other cases with more n, with a larger count of guesses and rounds, there will be more um, possible starting places. So after we finish up this function, we're going to use it. We're going to say for i in range to n, pass in all these possible starting positions, and then find the max out of all of these answers. So here's what the function itself looks like. We need to keep track of how many correct guesses Elsie has. Simple enough. Next, remember how, remember what we need to do every round. We need to do a swap and check to see if the shells that were swapped had a pebble, pebble underneath them. After we do the swap, we need to check to see if Elsie's correct guess is correct. So here's the swap part. Current location is where our pebble currently is. We're checking to see if the current location of the pebble, if one of the shells that the pebble is underneath is going to be one of the shells that were swapped. Notice how if the pebble was initially, for example, underneath shell number one, right here, the result is we would actually have the shell, rather the pebble, be under shell number two. and vice versa for this ELSIF. 
So after we do the swap, and also check to see if the pebble was swapped, the last thing we need to do is check Elsie's guess. And it's as simple as just checking to see if whatever Elsie guessed is equal to current location. Finally, return the number of correct guesses. All right, let's see what the code looks like for the driver. First of all, we have a function call to read in the input and save it to a list. Next, I pop the first item in that list to grab the number of rounds. So I, the only thing that's left in my list shells is going to be each round containing A, B, the two shells are swapped, and I'll use guess, G. So after I do that, I'm going to have a variable to keep track of what the current highest is going to be. So I'm going to say for i in range, give me the maximum between my current high and what would happen if the pebble started under shell number one, shell number two, shell number three, and shell number i, right? So each time I'm going to be checking to see if the round I'm trying right now gets a higher score than my current high score. By the time I finish the for loop, I will have figured out what is the maximum score that Elsie can get. All right, this has been another USACO bronze question brought to you by Jimmy Ong. I am a course developer and instructor at Coding Minds Academy. Check out my blog and resume in the description below. Thanks for watching.